Hello and welcome to Can TV Conversations. I'm Brandon Schaff and today we're talking to Jordan Gould to discuss how the COVID-19 pandemic changed the way we create content for TV and specifically for sports. And joining me now is Jordan, who recently graduated from Indiana University and will be working as a producer in South Bend, Indiana soon. Jordan, thank you for joining me today. Yeah, Brandon, thanks for having me on. Good to see you again. Yeah, great to see you too. And, you know, as sports resumed after coming to a halt in 2020, you know, a lot has changed over the course of the past year. And for you as somebody who will be working as a TV producer professionally, what did that look like from your perspective? Yeah, it was certainly a challenge um, going from something with, as as you know, and with Northwestern being in the Big Ten as well, the Big Ten Network Student Youth Program we had, it really provided me at Indiana a lot of great producing opportunities. And with with uh, COVID-19 coming beginning in March of 2020, it, everything kind of came to a halt and we had to kind of make adjustments and, and figure out what we could do. They limited people uh, with all the production that goes out of the Cuban Center um, or in the basement of Assembly Hall, which is where IU men's basketball and women's basketball teams play their home games. So it was certainly an adjustment. Um, and I'm looking forward to kind of getting back into things, uh, producing. I still had kind of a hand with uh, broadcasting. It's kind of sports picked up in the spring um, with the Big Ten kind of pushing a lot of the sports outside of football uh, to those winter and, and spring sessions. So uh, there were a lot of opportunities in the spring and it's good to see things kind of picking back up. So uh, definitely some adjustments made, uh, a lot of virtual meetings with uh, my fellow broadcasters and people and, and things like that to kind of coordinate. But uh, it was certainly, uh, I'm glad I'm just fortunate that we were able to do any broadcasts at all. Yeah, as students right now and really the world in general, everybody's been really used to doing everything remotely now, all these Zoom meetings and planning things out. And you know, in the last few years, you've produced both live sporting events you know, for the Big Ten Network, you work at the studio shows, working for, you know, the TV stations there. You know, what is different now because of the pandemic? Yeah, I mean, when I went in, I actually visited my station I'll be working at. I'll be starting next Tuesday in South Bend, uh, the, the NBC station there, WNDU. And, and they told me that they've had their multimedia journalists, their MMJs, reporters have been working from home, you know, ever since the beginning of the pandemic. And they've really limited... Uh, who's coming in. They have producers come in, but uh, they kind of have planned it out where people come in at different times and things like that. Um, so it'll be good to see everyone kind of come back uh, next month when since things are starting to open back up. But it, certainly it's been a lot of, as you said, Brandon, I mean, Zoom, virtual meetings, things like that. Um, but I, I think there's some good things that have come from it, uh, things that'll stick around, um, you know, and, and things I think it's hard to replicate. I mean, I'm a guy who likes working with people and having that social interaction. That's something that was certainly missed in this last year to year and a half. So to be able to go back inside a studio and, and to work with people and collaborate, you know, together in the same room is something that I, I think it just can't be replicated, you know, over a screen, what I'm doing like with you here today. Right. Uh, but there's certainly good things living in 2021 that we are with technology improving, uh, this is something that, you know, I'll imagine will will stay around. And, and I don't think it might become maybe necessarily the most mainstream form of communication, but it'll certainly be one that will kind of stay in the fold and, and be an option for uh, in the professional industry, uh, I think, for years to come. You know, you bring up an interesting point, the idea that everything is, you know, because it's remote, a part of that human to human interaction is lost. And you kind of see that you know, from the media's perspective, covering everything and talking to sources and things like that in the newsroom and in the production room. Do you feel like it has made your job more difficult as a producer to be able to do what you do? Um, I would say maybe a little bit, because uh, I, I think, you know, there, there was a set schedule, um, you know, before COVID, you know, broadcasters would be on site, I would be you know, on site as well. So, you know, for instance, with uh, a basketball game, right? Like I worked like a men's game a couple of years ago. And like I was saying earlier, so the, the control room where we work out of was in, in the basement of Assembly Hall. And the broadcasters would be, you know, for women's or men's game would just be right outside. So I just kind of walk right out, communicate them, communicate with them the message, kind of the game plan. What's our pregame coverage going to look like? How are we going to open the broadcast? Uh, there are any hits you want to do? What graphics? 
uh, any specific camera shots I can relay to the director, uh, things like that. And I would say those things can still be done over Zoom or things like that. But as I was saying, I, I think maybe some things can be lost in translation or maybe hard to visualize. I'm a visual learner, so I like to you know interact with people uh, in, in person, you know, to kind of understand and relay messages. So maybe that's something that gets lost in the shuffle uh, over you know internet or however you want to do it. But I, I still think the job could be done. It's just a little different. Yeah, and I mean. As things have evolved, you know, you've been able to pivot accordingly, you know, you've been able to still do the job to the best of your abilities. And I, I wonder from that production standpoint, do you ever see things kind of going back fully to the way that they were before? Um, I, I do, I do. I, I think things will go back, but also I would say with what we have experienced in this last year and a half, I think it'll just kind of add on as because I kind of what I was saying earlier is another um, form of communication, another method to do things. Uh, you know, we, we've seen, you know, you've watched ESPN or, or Fox or CBS, uh, their coverage or, or even TNT with the NBA playoffs right now. And, you know, they're able to do a lot of interviews and stuff. Uh, you know, they have the sideline reporter and the player separated or something like that. Or they have you watch the PGA Championship. But they had something very similar with CBS. Uh, when they were interviewing Phil Mickelson, I mean, social distancing and things like that still apply. Um, you know, we saw it in the bubble last year in the NBA as well with their coverage. So there's certainly ways to do things that are maybe a bit unorthodox that haven't been done before, but I could see them potentially staying in the mix. Um, so, yeah, I, I mean, I, I do think there's things that'll stick around, but I do see uh, most things returning to as they were. Uh, but now you have maybe as a producer or, or someone maybe in the control room, hey, we have another way to do things, or hey, this is something we haven't thought of before. You know, if I'm doing a show, you know, interviewing over Zoom or, or however you may want to do it, uh, th there's just more things that now have been added to the fold uh, for, I guess, a better overall broadcast and that provides more variety as well. Yeah, and you know, Jordan, we're almost out of time, but I want to ask you just one more quick question because I'm interested from your perspective just as a macro, the media industry as a whole, do you think that this has changed the way that people are consuming content on TV? And for you as a producer, how do you play into that? Oh, that's a good question. I do think I do think things have maybe changed a little bit from the consumption, but uh, oh, I, I think with any industry, I, I think the pandemic has proven that we as a society can still function and still move on, you know, despite a uh, major disruption in our, you know, economy, our, uh, you know, media industries, uh, whatever it may be, we, we found ways to adapt. And that's, that's what we've always done as, as, as a, you know, the, the human race. I mean, you, you go back, we've always found a way to persevere and kind of figure out ways to adapt. And as new technology has come into the fold, things change and, and uh, I think the same thing could be applied to, you know, our industry, Brandon, with, with media. I mean, certainly TV is ever changing. I mean, there's some certain things that will always be rooted fundamentally, but um, that's kind of part of what we're doing is we have to find ways to adapt and kind of figure out, hey, you know, as a consumer, you know, what's something that's sticking right now or what do people want to see, uh, what worked, what doesn't work, and then it's our job to figure out, you know, how we're going to get people to watch or tune in to what we're producing and what we're reporting on. Yeah, it'll definitely, it'll be interesting to see what happens as everything kind of evolves and, you know, we've seen how this goes. But I, I want to thank you. Thank you, Jordan Gould, for joining me today for this Can TV conversation. Thanks for joining me today. Yeah, Brandon, thanks for having me on. Take care and best of luck with you with everything at Northwestern. It seems like you guys are doing a great thing there. Thanks, Jordan. And thank you for watching Can TV Conversations. I'm Brandon Schaff. Have a good day.